In this video tutorial for Grand Prix Race Manager, we will cover step 9, which is running the race. This tutorial is using version 22 of the software. However, much of what we will cover applies to other versions of Grand Prix Race Manager. Up until this point we created our race groups, registered our racers and built the race schedules. Now it is time to run the race. On the overview tab of the main screen, click on the shortcut button for step 9. That opens up the racing screen, which is where you will run the race schedules. This is the screen intended for your audience to see while you are running the race. This screen can be displayed using a projection system or a large television. There are several things that you can configure on this screen, but we will cover that later on in this video. You will need to select a race group to run. First, I will show you the test and tie break option. Selecting this will display a generic list of racers on the screen. You can use this option if there is a head-to-head -head tiebreaker that you want to run. You can also use this option to do a communications test with your timer. However, you do need to conduct a successful communications test in the hardware settings screen before trying one here. To run a test heat, make sure that your timer is connected to the computer and is powered up. Now, click on the Ready Timer button. Wait until the bottom left area turns yellow and the button indicates ready. The software will attempt to reset the timer and will get itself ready to receive the heat results. If you are using a solenoid star gate or light tree that is controlled by the software, it will be activated at this time. The software gives a nag message indicating that the timer and software are ready, as well as letting you know that you can press the escape key to abort timing. You can click on the box on the left so you don't see this nag message in the future. At this point, you can release the star gate to begin the heat. Once all vehicles have finished, the timer will send the results and they will be displayed here. When testing, you can just wave your hand over the lane sensors to simulate the finish. Note, with the test and tiebreak mode, none of the results that you see will be saved. To select an actual race group to run, click on the tree button. To run a particular race group, select that group from the list. However, if you are using the master scheduling feature, then select the master schedule option. With master scheduling, the software will alternate through the heats of the different race groups. Note, depending on the size of each of your race groups, a larger race group can run more consecutive heats before alternating to another group. The first unrun heat is displayed on the screen. The bottom section has tabs for on deck, track record, top times, and heat winner. Note, track records and top times are pro version only features. The on deck section below displays the heat that is up next. You can adjust the height of the bottom section by clicking on the top border of the bottom section and dragging it up or down. You can change the heat to be displayed by clicking on the plus or minus buttons, or you can type the heat number into the box and then press the enter key. Before we go any further, I will show you how to customize this screen. If you click on the Options menu button, which is the small button with the menu icon, there are columns that you can turn on or off. You can also turn on and off any of the bottom tabs. Now, click on the Settings button. This is the small button with the gear icon. I'll actually cover the automation section of this screen a bit later. There are six sound effects buttons available on the racing screen. If you do not want to display these, then uncheck the Enable Sound Effects box. On the Colors tab, you can customize the screen colors if you like. On the Fonts tab, you can restrict the auto scaling of the font sizes if you find them to go too small or too large. Usually, this is non necessary. Once you are done making your changes, make sure to click on the Save button. Over on the bottom right of the racing screen is where you can display a logo image, if you like. This feature can be configured using the Advanced Software Settings screen. Note, using a racing logo is a pro version only feature. Now, I'll show you how you can run your heats. 
There are two ways to do so. The first way is to manually enter the results. You would do that if you are eyeball judging or are using a timing system, but, for one reason or another, it is not interfaced with the software. You can also just run some mock races with the software and manually enter the results if you don't have your timer handy. The second, and more convenient way, is for the software to get the results directly from a timing system. However, before we cover both of these ways, I will turn on the software's test mode. It is recommended that before you do any mock racing, to turn this mode on. With the test mode on, the track records and top times will not get corrupted with any of the test data. To turn on the test mode, click the Options menu button. Then check the test mode box. The header section will turn red as a reminder that the test mode is in use. Once you are done with your mock racing, make sure to turn the test mode off. Now, I will demonstrate manually entering in the heat results. Click on the manual results button. This may look like a small button with a 1, 2, 3 icon on it. You can enter the results for each lane on this screen. On the right of this screen is displayed information on the scoring. For time scoring, it will show the time to award a DNF racer. A DNF racer is one that did not cross the finish line. For point scoring, it will show the points to award for each finish place and for a DNF racer. You can type in the results for each lane. As soon as you fill up a lane box, the software will automatically jump to the next lane box. Once the last lane's results have been entered, it will put the focus on the Save button. You can either click on the Save button or press the Enter key. We will do one more manual heat results entry. I'll advance to the next unrun heat and open the manual heat results screen back up. This time, I will use the Test Data button. This will automatically fill in the results for each of the lanes with some simulated data. Using the test data button will make running a mock race very fast. The other use of the manual results screen is to edit the results for a heat that you have already run. To edit the results for a heat, first select the heat and then click on the manual results button. Make any changes that you need and then click on the save button. Now, let's run a heat using a timing system interfaced with the software. Click on the Ready Timer button. Wait until the area on the bottom left turns yellow and the button then says Ready. That's when it is OK to release the track start gate. For this scenario, we will have all lanes finish. Once the timer sends the results to the software, they will be displayed on the screen. If you are using point scoring, you will see the number of points instead of elapsed times. 1 point for first place, 2 points for second place and so on. Let's run another heat with the timer. For this scenario, we will have one lane not finish. Click on the Ready Timer button. Wait until you see the bottom corner area turn yellow. Then start the heat. Note, many timers will sit and wait and wait for all vehicles to finish before they will send the heat results. If that is the case with your timer, go ahead and press the escape key on the keyboard. With most timers, this will prompt them to stop waiting for the rest of the lanes to finish, and the timer will then send the results. A vehicle that does not finish will receive the DNF time, which was set in the hardware settings screen. If you are scoring by points, any racer not finishing will get points that equal the number of lanes that your track has, plus one. For example, on a four-lane track, a racer not finishing will get five points. This is so a racer not finishing will not get the same number of points as a racer that had finished, but happened to get last place. You can continue to run the heats until all are run. Note, you do not need to run heats in order. You can skip a heat if a vehicle is not ready, and then later come back to run it. Another thing to note is that if the software indicates that it is ready, but you need to do something else in the software, you can press the escape key on the keyboard to abort out of the timing mode.
A nice feature of the software is that you can actually automate the running of the screen. And that way, you don't have to keep someone manning the computer during the race. To set that up, click on the settings button here in the racing screen. There are two levels of that screen automation. The first is the ability to have the software automatically advance to the next unrun heat after you have completed the current heat. This is the auto heat advance feature. Check the enable auto heat advance box to turn that on. You can then set the time delay in seconds. This is the amount of time that heat results will be displayed on the screen before the software automatically displays the next heat. In our experience, 10 to 15 seconds is sufficient. That gives the audience enough time to check out the results for the heat that just finished. With only the auto heat advance feature turned on, you would still manually start each heat by clicking on the ready timer button in the software. However, if you also check the enable hands free timing box, the software will click on the ready timer button for you. That will fully automate the process. Once you click on the ready timer button to start the first heat, you can then walk away from the computer. You will control the race from the track starting line. As long as the software indicates that it is ready, you can go ahead and start a heat. Go ahead and save that change. Now, I'll run a heat with the hands-free mode turned on. Click on the ready timer button to kick things off. Now, release the track start gate. Vehicles finish and the timer sends the results to the computer. The results are then displayed on screen. Now, the auto heat advance timer will kick in, keeping those results displayed on the screen. Once that time delay elapses, the software will automatically advance to the next unrun heat. With the hands-free mode turned on, the software will also reset the timer and get itself ready to receive the next results. So, after kicking things off, the software will continue to run through the heats automatically, with the action being controlled from the start gate. You may run into a situation where you need to rerun a heat for one reason or another. Note, if the software indicates yellow and ready, you can press the escape key on the keyboard to get out of the software's timing mode. To rerun a heat, first navigate to the desired heat. You can use the plus or minus buttons to do so or type the heat number into the box and then press the enter key. Notice that with a heat that has been run already, this button will now be labeled rerun heat. Click on the rerun heat button. You will need to confirm that you want to remove the current results. Note, if you are scoring by times and running the pro version of the software, you will actually be able to select which particular racer or racers to rerun. You can rerun all racers, if you wish, or just the racer or racers that had an issue during the original running of that heat. If you are scoring by points or running the light version of the software, all racers will need to be rerun for that heat. The software would clear out the current results and you would rerun the heat to get the new results. For this demonstration, since I am running the pro version of the software and I'm scoring by times, I'll show you how to rerun select racers. I will just rerun the racer from lane 1, since there was some debris on the track that interfered with the running of that vehicle. So, I will uncheck the other racers. Now, to do the rerun, click on the rerun button. The time for the selected racers to rerun will be cleared from the screen, but any racers not to be rerun will retain their original time. Load only the vehicles to be rerun to the track. Now, since the timer and software are ready, go ahead and rerun that heat. Once the timer reports the results, the racers that were rerun will have their new run times displayed you can continue on to your next heat. Once you've run all of the master schedule heats, the software will let you know that the round is complete. If you are not using master scheduling, then once you complete all of the heats for one group, you can then switch to your next group and run their heats. Note, if you happen to have missed a heat along the way, the software will remind you about it, so you can go back and run it.
If you are running a dynamic schedule and run the last heat for the current phase, the software will let you know that the current phase is complete and will ask if you want to run another phase. If so, the software will go ahead and create the next phase for you and update the screen with those heats. You can complete as many phases as you like. The racing screen can also be used for ad hoc racing, where you grab racers to run as they show up to the event. To do so, you do need to select a particular race group to run. You will not be able to use master scheduling for such a race format. Then click on the manual heat button. This will bring up the manual scheduler screen where you can create one heat or a set of heats for the selected racers. For information on how to use the manual scheduler, make sure to check out our video for step 8 on custom scheduling. There are also some hidden features to the screen that I want to mention. If you are using our race effects or race replay software, Grand Prix Race Manager can be configured to control those applications. Grand Prix Race Manager will send messages to those applications so they can work in a coordinated fashion with the racing action. You can configure and test the interface to those external applications using the advanced software settings screen. Note, external app control is a pro version only feature. The software can also work in conjunction with our Derby Web software. Derby Web allows you to use tablet computers and mobile phones to provide some features to your race crew and to the audience. You can configure the interface to Derby Web using the advanced software settings screen. Note, the Derby Web interface is also a pro version only feature. For more information on this screen, you can click on the Help button. When you are done racing all of this round or your testing, go ahead and close the racing screen. This takes us to the Racing tab. Note, the columns displayed on this tab are affected by what you have said in the Software Settings screen. Over on the left side of the screen is the list of rounds and groups. If you select a race group, you will see the schedule for that group. If any of the heats have been run, you will see the results displayed in the appropriate columns. I currently have the master scheduling feature turned on, so what is shown are the heat numbers from the master schedule. If you are not using that feature, you will see the heat numbers from the group schedule. In the Show Heat Results section, it will give you a count of the heats for the selected group schedule. If any heats have not been completed, it will give you a count of those in red. You can easily see the unrun heats by selecting the Not Completed option. If you want to, you can just stop at one round of racing and then give out your awards. You can also run additional rounds of racing for each of your race groups or even run a grand finals round of your top racers from your different race groups or a grand turtle round for the slowest racers. Starting new rounds, grand finals and grand turtle rounds will be covered in a separate video. If needed, you can resize the left section by clicking on the border and dragging it left or right. This tab also has a search feature. You can click on the small search button to bring up the search screen. Enter any of this information to search on. Clicking on the Find button will find the first results for that racer. Subsequent clicks on the Find button will find the next results for that racer. For more information on racing, you can click on the small Help button. Now let's go back to the Overview tab by clicking on the Home button. Once all of your groups have raced, step 9 will automatically be checked as completed. Stay tuned for the other half of step 9, which is creating new rounds, grand finals and grand turtle rounds. Otherwise, stay tuned for our video for step 10, where we will cover the awards ceremony.